Hello. <laughs> this is Michael. He's going to get his lessons on microphone things <laughs> microphone from things. Sam, Sam, the awesome engineer that we talked to last week. Yeah. Fill in. I'm a stand in. I'm a stand in. Guest. Yeah. Well, you know, some reason, show up, we just have to yeah, do our coolness. <laughs> Uh, so usually mission and guests just kind of sit facing each other, sort of kind of. Mm -hmm. So if you want, hi, yeah, welcome guest. Then... <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. And there's this other cool thing I have to that that may come into play that we're okay. going to talk about. There's a cool big foodie event coming here. Oh really? There might be some cool stuff there. We'll talk. So. This is on an arm, so you can really take it with you wherever you want to go. If you okay. need to reposition, you can just kind of move it with you. But yeah. um, you just want to make sure that it's kind of pointing right at your mm -hmm. mouth and staying pretty close to it like she is and yeah. just talking right into it. You Doing. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you can edit you know, the live You know, kind of just being, just being our podcast selves. <laughs> yes. We're not, we're not perfection, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Far from it. I wouldn't want to be. That sounds like a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can we do a little sound check for me here? Yes. Hello, this is Mish Hancock. I'm talking to Sam. My voice sounds wonderful. All right, you sound good. And can I get you to do a say hello? Yep, hello. Can you hear me well enough? Um, I, I usually talk around this this loud. It's good to know. We're not going to make you yell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Talk louder. I don't want to. This is my level. <laughs> this is my level. I so often get people who I ask to like, can you talk for me? And you got a heart. They'll like mumble. And I'm like, you know, talk how loud you're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I feel good about this. You feel good? Is this, is this happening? I feel good about it too. Well, we're talking about good things, so that's even better. Koshensky. Was that Polish? Um, it's Russian. Russian? Mm hmm. I come from the Polish people. Really? <laughs> yes. Were you born there or just family? <laughs> no, my grandpa. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, Russian. That's cool. <laughs> Have you ever been? I've been to Latvia. That's where my dad grew up. Dad's really? Side. Yeah, so we were all in the Soviet Union back back then yeah and, then and so was it a totally cool experience it was really cool visiting um how I old were you there. when you went so i was around 13. oh cool um, so old enough to remember yeah oh yeah right. i remembered everything he showed me the little apartment that him and 15 other people shared oh my god the size of my dorm almost yeah yeah no it's a very different life oh i mm. bet yeah i bet I so I had a I've I've got a nephew that um, went over to Russia. He's he's Mormon. He went on his mission okay. there, and and I was asking him. I mean, I ask odd questions, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the typical. Question. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so are the squirrels different there? He's looking at. Me. I'm like, seriously? That's no, important because to ask. squirrels are different. I be, they are. Some squirrels yeah. are like red squirrels, and yeah. some are. And here we got like your typical brown squirrel. Mm -hmm. But when I was up in Vancouver, I was like, look at those squirrels. There's there's black ones. Yeah. They're different here. So he's looking at me like. I didn't pay attention to the squirrels ant fish. Yeah. I'm like, well, next time you go over there, pay attention. Mm -hmm. You never know what those Russian squirrels look like. Yeah. You should come back and be able to talk about these things. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember any food that you ate that you were like, this is so different? Um, I grew up eating Russian food, so really, yeah. So nothing was so what out of the ordinary. Is, like what? What did, did did your mom make the Russian food, or did my dad? grandma? Your grandma. My grandparents. So what did she make? I don't know, just everything. Um, I like borscht. I was going to say borscht. Yeah, That's one yeah, I know. I know yeah. that one. The ones you know, probably. And then uh, there's katletki. Did you have, like, what's that? Katletki is Russian, like, meatballs, kind of. Uh-huh. Um, did you have Russian tea cakes? We, I don't think we did. <laughs> oh, see? No. She needs to get on that. I think she does. Because dessert's important, no Dessert matter. Dessert is important. Yeah. Where, what kind of food we're mm -hmm. having. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam, you tell us when you are ready and we will go. All right. Here we go. Okay. Uh, what is this actually saying? <laughs> okay. Hi, this is Mish Hancock, and you are listening to Mishmash, a place where I get to talk to the weird, wacky, wonderful people of this world, people I adore and want to know more about. 
Today, my guest is Michael Koshansky. Michael is the head of business development for Gift a Meal, a mobile app which seeks to inspire simple acts of kindness by making it easy for people to fight hunger in their communities while also helping restaurants to reach new audiences. Welcome, Michael. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So that's like a win-win, yeah. your app. Uh huh. Where did this idea come from? Um, so Andrew and Aiden are our founders. Um, Aiden's at Dartmouth. Um, Andrew's graduating WashU in St. Okay. Louis currently. And they were interning at a venture capital firm, eating at a restaurant, and they saw that there weren't that many people there. The restaurant seemed really to just care about the customers, care about the community members, but no one really was at that restaurant, even though the food was incredible. So they were trying to think, how could they, I don't know. Um, help get the word yeah, out. Yeah, help get the word out yeah, that the restaurant. Yeah, mar because marketing is difficult. No, yeah. You can have the greatest thing on earth, but mm -hmm. if it, if you aren't telling people, yeah. come here, look what, they, we have this awesome mm -hmm. thing, It's nobody's going to show up. And I think a lot of restaurants are doing incredible things by donating their food to food banks, by um, donating to various charities, but it's always under the surface. No one really knows about it. Really? And I think it's really great to bring it up to our peers to see, like, oh, wow, this restaurant is part of Gift a Meal. They really care about um, donating meals to the community, and so it just really brings it to the surface. We're all about being connected on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and so people people know when the restaurant um, is really caring about it. So that. when someone downloads your app, uh -huh. and as long as the restaurant that they're going to is a part of the program, what do they do? So they order their meal. They can order a drink. They can take a picture of anything inside the restaurant. That's the restriction. It can be of them and their friends. It can be of their a beautiful meal and then they can recommend their friends to the restaurant on the app and then the meals donated um, and if they want to donate not their meal but a, their a meal. meal is donated to yeah, some uh, someone in need exactly and then they have the option to upload that picture to social media to basically spread the word about the restaurant's initiative and about gift a meal and then two meals will be donated and oh, cool. yeah so we really like it when people do that um, when they upload it to their Facebook showing all their hundreds of friends and family that they just used gift a meal at this restaurant um, and it just it really benefits the restaurant as well that's some marketing that they're usually not able to get right mm -hmm. well and if they're not really talking it up yeah this is mm -hmm. a way to talk it up so so the but they don't like actually go make a meal and give it to somebody no. it's, it's they they give the money that would it exactly take to make so, the meal too the restaurants pay us a monthly fee, and then from that money, we're able to fund the meals to be donated. Gotcha. And it's through Operation Food Search in St. Louis, and then we also have a partner food bank in Chicago and in Detroit, which oh, are our three cool. other areas. So we try to keep it local. Um, if someone takes a picture in St. Louis, we try to provide a meal to someone in need in St. Louis. Got, if someone yeah. takes that picture in Chicago, someone in Chicago will be fed. So, all right, and then how many restaurants do you guys have so far that have signed up? We have over 100. Um, we... Uh, started off in St. Louis, so that's our biggest market, and right. then we have um, about 25 to 30 in Chicago, and we just started in Detroit. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And and can any restaurant be a part of it? Any restaurant. Even if they're a chain restaurant, they can yes. be a part of it? Mm -hmm. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. Hear that, McDonald's? <laughs> just saying. That would be awesome. I mean, what if what if if McDonald's got on it? Then it would be yeah. a gift. That would be humongous. It would be huge. How many people would be taking mm -hmm. pictures of the of what they're eating and being yeah. at the? And now McDonald's looks so different. They all have their own little quaintness to them. Yeah, I I think that would definitely be the way we expand quickly. I've been on calls with uh, the chief marketing officers of Cracker Barrel of all these really big chains and we've been, chains and we've been very close, but there's just been something holding holding them back from doing it. Um, I've talked to a lot of chains, and hopefully we got an Applebee's to sign um, 32 of their locations. Oh, and awesome. And that was around last year or so, and uh, that worked out really well. And so we're just looking for those other big opportunities, those other big chains to, um, to give this a try, integrate this into their marketing platform, see if um, their customers really enjoy it. And so, exactly. And in Applebee's, it worked out really well. We saw that their sales increased and just their image in those uh, restaurants seem to seem to really be doing better. So are most of these restaurants already doing this? This is the, in a sense like mm. they, they're, they're doing something now and but even if they're not this is like a way to give back. It if you, is. Like if they don't have a program going mm -hmm. on right now here's a way you can give back very easy to do. 
Yeah, I I think a lot of our restaurants are already very charitable. Um, they're already donating to food banks. This is a way to have a marketing service with that social impact on the side that drives exactly. it. Exactly. Well, so, yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. social proof. My friends love that place. Maybe I would love that place too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Well, yay! Mm -hmm. And so this. Um, so then, how many people are on your team, and are you growing your team? So we have four people who are owners of the company, uh, me, Jacob, Aiden, and Andrew. Okay. And then we have about five in interns or so. Um, we're taking on a couple more interns this summer. Um, and the interns, I lead a team of interns in Chicago. Um, oh, cool. There are a couple of college students. And then we have a few more at WashU who are also interns. And do you have, um, do you guys have an office? We had an office um, over the summer. I was working at the 1871 in Chicago. It's okay. this really great startup incubator. And then Andrew and Aiden um, and the other interns were working at um, Capital Innovators last summer. Okay. Um, so we had an office space there. And now we're going to have another office. Once Andrew graduates, he's going to have a full-time location. I love it. I haven't mm -hmm. graduated yet, and I started a business. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so neat. are you guys tapped into the whole startup community and, and all the different areas? Yeah, we've been... Um, We've been competing at the different startup competitions for quite some time. Um, we were at uh, Startup Accelerator and we Startup Connection. We won first prize at the the People's Choice Award. Uh, that we got the People's Choice Award. Very there. cool. And we've been we've definitely been um, feeling really at home in the startup startup community. We go to all the different networking events and Capital Innovators really helped with that. Um, with kind of that outreach of meeting all the new startups, but yeah, there's not, no other, I think, city like St. Louis that has that kind of feel to it. Aw, mm -hmm. that made me feel happy just right there you <laughs> saying that. <laughs> it's your St. Louis is its own thing. It is. We are. We are, yeah. we, we are, its own, we are very different than mm -hmm. other cities. It's hard to explain it to other people sometimes, but yeah. they come in, if they move here, they're like, you guys are really different. Like, yeah. You know, and in, in many good ways. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, we may not be the first to get there. We might sit back and look and go, just hold on. We're checking this out first. <laughs> but well, I think we're starting to be with all of the startups yeah. that we have at this point. We're, we're, we're making the yeah. way here in this little Midwestern town of ours. Yeah, there's some exciting things happening for sure. Yeah, and you mm -hmm. get to see it all because you're with all the startups. That's so fun, <laughs> isn't it? Right? Yeah, it is. Well, we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with Michael Koshansky. Yay, thank you. Is this going to go by so fast? Yeah, it goes by really fast. <laughs> it always does. It's like, oh, that's already done. Okay, now we're off to our next one. Mm -hmm. Are there any cool things that we should bring up and talk about? Um, I would say, let me think about that for a second. So I already explained it. Um, I don't know. I think like people, when we talk about the company, they start asking more questions about, I don't know, how... How does this make money? Are you guys a nonprofit? Are you for profit? So we are a for profit, mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's a question people like to ask. They like to ask, um, "What does it mean by meal being donated?" They usually can't wrap their head around that that well. Right. Well, that's uh, why I asked because mm -hmm. I was like, "I'm sure it's not like no, it's that not the they make an food. extra meal and walk outside." No. And go, Who wants this? You no. know. So yeah. It's through the food bank, which um, makes sense. And so I think we already touched upon that. Um, I don't know. I think some then people Then we ask. just have to go into... We have to talk about Russian things. Really? Oh, I think we should. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Okay. Latvia. <laughs> yeah, I think we should talk about that. Okay. Did your dad... Was your dad born there? Yeah, my whole family. My whole, dad, my mom, mom. My mom was born in, um, in Russia. And then my grandparents. It was just... Me and, and my sisters, who here? are first generation. Yeah. Oh, we totally have to talk about that. <laughs> I think that's super interesting. All right. Let's go. Hurry up, Sam. No <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He's like, Leave me alone. He's, he's ignoring me because I'm being snarky. <laughs> He does magical things. Seems All right. Like it. Yep, I'm ready. And we are back with Michael Koshansky. So I, we, I have to we have to talk about Russia because I asked you what if you're what you where you're from, your mm -hmm. last name. You said it's Russian, mm -hmm. and then you just shared with me that. Grandma and grandpa and mom and dad and all from Russia and then they moved here and you yeah. and your sister 
yeah. are the first generation born here in the United States. Correct. So why did they move from Russia to here? Um, well, they all were growing up in the Soviet Union. Um, that was definitely uh, very different culturally than America. A lot less opportunities. Um, it just it was just a kind of dying society. They mm -hmm. everyone was trying to leave. Everyone was trying to move out, and Aww. so um, they were fortunate enough to leave. And uh, my dad actually didn't meet my mom until in America. Oh really? Um, so okay. yeah, they just separately they families um, got up and left, and they met in America. Um, and then yeah, me and my sister were the first generation in America, and then. Um, same with my two younger sisters. So do you speak Russian? Um, I'm actually not the best at speaking Russian, <laughs> I was just wondering if you grew yeah. up in that, if, um, the, if they also spoke Russian in the They did speak Russian to me. That was the first language I learned. Um, I think everyone in my family probably speaks better Russian than me. Um, it just didn't <laughs> click for me, I guess. <laughs> but the um, English clicked in. Yeah, I guess know, the so. English worked. Um, but I took Russian um, in college and uh, wanted to develop that skill a little bit. Definitely made my grandparents happy. And, and you grew up, I thought this was interesting, that you mm. grew up eating Russian food. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like, you know, so you guys weren't in the backyard doing ribs or, you Not know, as often, barbecuing no. ribs. No, we, I <laughs> guess we didn't do that. This is our American thing. No. <laughs> Did uh, you barbecue, is there, is there a, like, when I lived in Spain, mm -hmm. the, they would do the paella thing. Mm -hmm. And that was their barbecue, really. Yeah. Like, so whenever we would come over and you would cook something outdoors and mm -hmm. everybody would watch it being made and then everybody would eat it, it that was the paella thing. Mm -hmm. Here we all do the barbecue thing. Yeah. Is there such a thing in Russia that equates to this not, outdoor not quite. flaming barbecue-ish <laughs> thing? There really isn't, but I guess uh, Russian restaurants are definitely a beast of their own. It's just you go in there and there's plates on plates on plates of food and it's family style always. You're just um, reaching your hands across the ah. table and then there's Russian live music. These singers are singing and then when you're done with your food you dance and just it's, it's a three hour, four hour um, event for That's sure. That's a big yeah, deal. It is. Um, and then you're dancing afterwards you're burning off. Ca this is very healthy. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> it really is. Um, but yeah, you never leave the restaurant uh, hungry. The, they definitely feed you well. And oh, fun. Yeah, and I think that's definitely adapted to any time we have a family dinner, whether we're ordering sushi or any any type of food we eat, we're always family style, grabbing and reaching and talking, and it's it's a nice, it's a really nice atmosphere. You guys do shots of vodka then? <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they start you off young, I guess, in, in Russian culture. But, really? Seriously? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just it's it just, it just. I don't know. It's a different. You got eleven type of, year olds. Just, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Doing they shots. They start training you that, right then. You um, need this. <laughs> You're Russian. I guess so. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's dinners are some of my best memories. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, then, then being here in the United States, how old were your parents when they got here? My mom was nine, and my dad was twenties. So, they, so there's an age difference there. Yeah. There, okay. was, there's a. He is around 10 years older than my mom. Got ya. Mm -hmm. And then, um, is there like a Russian community in St. Louis? In St. Louis, I'm actually not sure because I'm I'm originally from Chicago suburbs. Okay. So I have yet to find the Russian community. Uh, I'm sure there is one. But, but in Chicago, in Chicago there was yeah. a Russian community. Oh, that's yeah. where everybody grew up. And then you ended up here because you went to Wash U, right? Yes. Okay. Right. And and I guess the Russian community, it's all dispersed, but we definitely have um, a lot of my dad's friends who he left Russia with. Um, our, our neighbors are within a 10-minute driving distance, and they grow, grew up together, and now they're still together, um, friends with their kids. And so it, it, cool. it definitely stays, stays together and interwoven. I got mm -hmm. you. All right. So... Then what did they do when they got here? I mean, what your grandparents like left yeah. jobs, careers, what have oh, you? Oh yeah, it's incredible. And then they came here. What did they do? That no English. Um, they they just worked hard. Uh, my my grandpa he uh, started working in this kind of mechanical field, just working with his hands, fixing things. And some people would call him to get something fixed. He'd have no idea what they're saying, but he would just go there, figure it out, fix it. Um, oh, and so wow. he roasted the top. Yeah, he roasted the top, was one of the most productive workers. This was the same case with all my family members, my grand, my grandma, my grandpa on the other side, all of my grandparents just without English speaking. Can you imagine no. not speaking the language and being able to compete with all the other employees and being able to be successful, get a job? Uh, my dad... Did the same thing. He uh, went to school in America to finish his degree. 
didn't understand half the things that were being said in class, but just just worked hard, was was smart, wow. and um, became an engineer. And that was the case with everyone. That is so mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. What kind of engineer is he? He is a nuclear power plant engineer. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. So yeah. not just... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, they definitely did well for themselves, every one of them. Um, that just, I don't know, they instilled a lot of values of hard work and... They gave me and my sisters just the absolute most incredible start we could have. Um, there's no chance that I could be where I am at if um, if I was born in the similar situations as they were. And so they wow. they really they really worked. That's impressive. Yeah. Bravo to them. Yeah. So and and so let me get this straight, just because you said you it was you and your sister, and then you've got two yeah. younger sisters. That's correct. So the, were they surprises to mom and dad? So or? how it worked was um, my dad remarried and my dad and stepmom, who's also Russian, okay. um, had one of my little sisters who's nine. And then my mom remarried and my mom and stepdad, who's also Russian, um, remarried and they have a, uh, my little sister who is seven. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so you uh, have these two little yeah. ones too. Is that mm -hmm. fun? Oh, it's so much fun. Do you fun. feel more uncle than, than brother? I feel big brother. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Yeah. I, they're... They're one of the most important things in my life, Aww. and yeah, I think about them every day, and always think of how I can be a good role model for them. That's mm -hmm. awesome! Oh my gosh, well, I I have to applaud your family. I mean, <laughs> I I find that to be very inspirational. I mean, to to just have that sort of drive mm -hmm. to be like, I am gonna go over there and figure it out. Yeah, I mean, that shows a lot. That's a difficult thing to oh, yeah. do. You know, I hear I'm going to this place. I don't know what the heck to expect, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, America is definitely quite different than Russia. Mm -hmm. Um, I just saw this thing. I have to say it because I thought it was very interesting. But Vladimir Putin's daughter, and I don't even know if this is like, if this is like a now kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when I look at even what Russians are doing now, I feel like it looks more like our 1970s TV than it does this. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Kind of, yeah. But he, she was doing this wacky aerobic dancing thing and then there was this guy throwing her up in the air. She was flipping her around. <laughs> Quite athletic. Did you have any idea that do you know anything about this video? I did not. I did not see that video. I but, totally have to look yeah. at this video. It was on something I was watching. I'm like, oh my goodness! I don't even know how old this girl is. Yeah. If that was then or now or what? But no, no one in my family can do that. That's no, for sure. Well, I wasn't expecting all Russians yeah. to be extremely athletic and acrobatic, but <laughs> but it was just. I was just yeah, wondering. Yeah, that's it was, interesting. It was just. Uh -huh. I was like, now I have to go find this video of her doing this, and then mm. I was thinking about the guy that was throwing her around. He better be careful. Oh yeah. You know, that's a that's a risky job to have. <laughs> it sounds like oh oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank you for sharing all of that information. Of uh, we will take a quick break and we will be right back with Michael. Now it's fun question time. Oh. Which I know we we didn't just... enter fun question time before. Oh, I don't tell you okay. what's going to happen at fun question. If they're easy. Oh, I'm sure. It's nothing. It, I'm not going to do anything mean. No, I like fun <laughs> questions. I, I don't do mean. I like fun questions. I think it's it's just it's just to kind of stir things up a little. Mm -hmm. um, and wow, and one of the questions again, it's perfect. It's just perfect for you. So this is good. Tell me when you're ready, Sam. I always wonder what he's doing over there. Like, oh, this sounded so bad in this one part. I take that out. <laughs> oh, That'd you could auto tune my voice. When I break out in song, especially, I do that. Yeah? It, yeah. We have karaoke. No, we don't. It, I'm not a singer person. Oh, me either. I don't, I don't get how people can make their voice sound that way when they sing. Yeah. I'm actually um, not even close to a good singer, but I'm planning this a cappella event at Wash U where all the groups are performing at the 560 Music Center. Are you going to take part in it? Just no, for the heck I'm of it? definitely not. Well, you not. could just be in the group and no. just lip sync. No, I can't. <laughs> but um, it's going to be a charity a cappella concert. All proceeds are going to breast cancer. And so oh, it's happening cool. this uh, Saturday. That's what I've been spending a lot of time so doing. So is it only Wash U a cappella? How many wa how There's many about acapella? 10 groups. Really? Yeah, and one of them made it to nationals, was the top 10 group in the nation. It's it's almost oh. like that movie Pitch Perfect. It's yeah. really yeah. Really is. You see them all performing and they have these Do they routines. do dancing oh, things yeah, they with do it? Routines. And when yeah. is that? That sounds like fun. It's this Saturday, 7.30. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. I yeah. Uh, uh, that sounds like fun, though. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're trying to fill up uh, 
thousand thousand person kind of stadium and where is it gonna be it's on the Del Mar Loop there is this music center 560 music center big stage um, really great performances happen 560 there. 560 Music mm -hmm. Center. Yeah. I don't even know this one. It's just not yeah. the pageant. It's, yeah, it's it's a whole different place. Oh, yeah. On the loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's wow. It's right there. Um, a lot of orchestras go there to perform. Um, it's a perfect place for acapella. I am yeah. completely amazed how I can live in this city for this long, and I still don't know half yeah. the stuff that's going on. There's this cool app called Olio City. Um, have you heard of them? No. So they're, they're one of the startups. Um, that how we, do you spell it? O L I O. Olio City. Yeah, and they're they're doing really great. And what they're doing is it's basically just like a what's happening around you. You look um, on the app and it tells you Thursday, Friday, Saturday night what's close to you in St. Louis and within a 15 mile range, all the cool things that's happening, cool. the cost, and there's some really neat things that you you discover a lot on that. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to check that out because. Yeah. What I wish somebody would do, okay, so you know how you go to cities and you look up restaurants and yeah. wherever you are, and then it's like, it, it just shows you kind of all the restaurants you mm -hmm. can already go to in your own city. Mm -hmm. I wish that they had like the rare gem jewels, like mm. the things you don't know, like in Chicago, mm -hmm. right? And tell me if I'm wrong, but everybody goes to Gino's East. Yeah. But is that really the best pizza? Probably not. No. no. Pequot's is the best. That's what I Yeah, and you want to know. Actually, yeah, and so yeah. so I don't want to know where all the tourists go. I want to know where the locals know is the best place. Yeah, that's a good one. That, that'd be a good one to have. Um, well, and it has a little bit of a funkiness to it, you know, because yeah. I'm not, like, I don't really have any desire to go to all the big touristy places, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I don't want to go into another tall building It's because it's the same where it's like, yep, we're up really high. Those are little ant people. Okay, I'm done. You know, I want to go to something a bit more interesting yeah. and outside the box, kind of fun, funky. Yeah. I and agree I would with that. love to have a travel app that would tell me the awesome, cool it things exist. to do. It should exist. I know. Let's make one tomorrow. Okay. We'll get your people together, my yeah. people together. Mm -hmm. Off we go. <laughs> that was easy. You went in, Sam? Yeah, sure. Why All right. Not? We have a team. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's fun and funky. Sam posts things on Facebook that I don't know what he's talking about half the time because he's way too intellectual for me. They're not, no, see, that's the mistake that everyone's making. They're not intellectual. <laughs> they're incredibly stupid jokes. <laughs> but no, they're, they're stupid, stupid jokes that you have to have, like, be a brainiac to understand. What did you say the other day about the something you plugged in and it became sentient? And I was oh, like, I, I can't even know what that means. I have, like, one of these USB hubs at home for all my stuff, and I had, it was unplugged and I accidentally plugged it into itself. And I thought, like, oh man, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be the one to destroy the universe by accidentally creating <laughs> sentient you, robots. You, <laughs> you create it like this; it's gonna just implode. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to watch out for you. I didn't know you were that scary. Yeah, very scary. <laughs> are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And we are back with Michael Koshansky, and it is question time. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. You didn't know about the questions. I did not. See, that's even better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and this one is so appropriate. Um, what is your most favorite meal ever and who made it? I, I probably already know, but I just... No, I don't think you do know. Oh, uh, good. Okay, I, even better. I absolutely love sushi. Um, it's got to be my favorite food. Really? And um, I went to this one restaurant called Yuzu, Yozu in Chicago. Um, it actually went viral on Facebook. It's that one where they make all these amazing designs on the sushi, like dragon and all these Ooh. colorful different it's you have to watch it. It has I have fifty to million go. views. Um and it was absolutely incredible. Um yeah, it was an amazing meal right by the Bulls stadium. We saw a Bulls game that night. Really? And, oh how yeah, fun. It's it's my new favorite sushi spot. All right, how do you spell the name of this restaurant? It's Y U Z O and did you get any um, animal designs on your plate, or what? What was your design? Um, they made this. They didn't make one of their famous ones. They made this really cool kind of rainbow and the, all these different colors and sauces in it. Uh, my sister went to the restaurant and got a fish, like a really cool fish design. Oh, cool! So, yeah, they, they, they have to be you. on Instagram, right? Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds like an. In, that yeah. sounds like it was made for Instagram. Just yeah. everything they make. Oh, how uh, or fun! Made, or made for gift a meal. Um, uh, or let's yeah. go talk to them about that. I should, mm -hmm. because everybody wants to have sushi. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, that's so. I'm so glad I asked that because mm -hmm. I thought 
you know, I'm not to say that Grandma isn't a rock and cook. Oh, right? yeah, she's incredible. Because she totally is. Oh, yeah. But we're into the sushi. I am. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right. Your next question is, okay, so let's say that I had the ability okay. to set you up in a meeting with anybody you want to be set up with mm -hmm. about gift a meal. Who 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 am I going to go find for you? Who am I talking to for you? Um, I would say Warren Buffett. Um, totally my good friend. Really? I'll call him tomorrow. No. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I, but I do. I love him. Mm -hmm. I feel like he is one of those extremely rich people that's also sensible. I and, agree. like, gets people. I really agree. Like, um, like has compassion, mm -hmm. right? So w tell me why. What do you love well, about he's, him? Well, he's kind of that inspirational role model. If there's ever an essay to write about who's the person you look up to, who's the person you want um, to be one day, it's him. Um, he's incredibly successful. He's very, very smart, very skilled, um, raised in an enormous amount of wealth and then put he he lives simply yeah um, and he's, he gives I, almost all of it away he's such a happy human being because of that um and that's that's ultimately my goal i think he he definitely would pro would give some great advice into how to grow the company i'm sure he knows some people who would help us he um, probably expand. knows a few yeah if, if warren <laughs> says this is a good one he probably has I think, those I, yeah he, I just let me give them a call Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I think. Do you know anything, any interesting things about him that is not common knowledge that you've just like, made because you've, you've read about him or? Yeah, he um, he goes to the same diner like every every single morning, say like this little local one. He re he just has the same routine. He like really likes this steak. He just eats steak all the time and <laughs> just like a old fashioned quirky like boy at heart type of type oh, of man. Oh, that so, is a great way to describe yeah, him. A bunch of Wash U students actually got the chance to meet him. Um, I was not able to to be among that, but I, I'd love to meet him sometime. Oh, just, that is so just, just what talk a great answer yeah. that is <laughs> i love it i i really like him too i saw him on something and, and wait i just looked at your tennis shoes <laughs> oh you have to show everybody on live what your tennis shoes look like sorry all those listening on the podcast you I don't, don't get to see them that but you can big. all right i got them from those peru. are cool where'd you get those from uh from peru uh, two weeks ago those are so cool yeah they were only about ten dollars Oh, get out. Yeah, it's, everything's Do they cheaper. have mail order? <laughs> I don't believe so. It's one of those small little I markets. some Peruvian yeah. tennis shoes. I love, I can, I'm a tennis shoe person. Oh, are So, you? like, I love when people have interesting tennis uh -huh. shoes. Do, are you a tennis shoe person, or was that just one of those, like, I have to? I have tennis I just like there. I like unique things. Um, I like things that stand out, and uh, these definitely stood out. Um, I was looking through my closet, saying, "How can I? What clothes can I wear with these?" No, you. They but, just go with everything. I guess They're so. just a statement. I mean, <laughs> it seems that's like what. It. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Or, and you need a skateboard now, right? Because that that's very skateboardy. It seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a desire to be a skateboard person. You I should would do it. Totally hurt myself. You were, you should do <laughs> I it. I don't know. I mean. The older you get, you don't, you, it, like, your sense of balance isn't so high. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why people, that's why, it's like, the older you get, you can't. It's like roller coasters and they, oh. Yeah. <gasps> and I used to think, wow, I used to love this stuff. And then some person was telling me, well, it has to do with the crystals in your ear mm. and something gets out of balance. Yeah, or some science thing that probably you would say. Yeah, I mean, I have no, yeah, his science that one, yeah. Sam. Let's find out about those ear crystals. crystals. Ear crystals. And we'll have somebody on the little you know, get my ear crystals, you know, right in place for me. Okay, so you won a competition at Washington University, mm -hmm. an idea bounce elevator pitch. Share it with us. What was it? It it had to do with gift a meal. It was Oh really yeah, good. Yeah, we, all of those competitions we use gift a meal. Um so the those. elevator pitch was you got up and talked about it. Yeah, just and like, like a thirty like, second minute elevator pitch. Um you explain the company as quickly and to the best of your ability and hope that the judges get it and understand it and and like it well and that's hard to do oh yeah it's it's very few companies or ideas um can be explained well in 30 seconds to a minute but that's why it's an elevator pitch here let's say you're in the elevator with warren buffett he's uh, he's he's heading out you explain it in 30 seconds. That's, you're like, Warren, that's what we have to do. I got 30 seconds. I'm yeah. telling you something. Uh, oh my gosh, practice. Because, yeah. it, you know, because your your energy's around it, you'll probably bump it. You have to go to the diner. Do you know what diner he goes to? I have to go to Omaha. He, he's still in Omaha, so I guess I'd so have to take a trip over there. 
Yeah. Somebody knows what diner he's showing up at. You oh, no, no. Like, it's it's pretty common. Oh, news, yeah. Well, like. then just go to the diner. Oh, yeah. You know, and then just do... Have you ever seen that goofy movie? Um, oh, gosh. What is it called? It's Steve Martin movie, and it's Bowfinger. Mm, I haven't seen it. It's a completely goofy movie, but there's a part in there where he's trying to get this, like, big movie producers. You know, okay. he's, <laughs> he's just talking really loud on yeah. his phone, like, trying, trying to... to and it was just, it's just hilarious, uh, but... No, don't do that. We okay. probably won't appreciate it. But, I mean, I think that's cool that you mm. have it down to 30 seconds so that, yeah. I mean, when you go into a meeting, it's like, here's what I do. This is yeah. what this is all about. Definitely. And there, boom, then you got people's attention mm -hmm. and you can move forward. But if you're going like, what's kind of like, and then, I don't know, and oh, please just, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So what are your future plans with Gift and Meal? You guys are just going to keep adding on restaurants or... Mm -hmm. Is there anything, are there any new parts of it that you want to expand into or look yeah, into? Yeah, we've definitely um, thought about expanding the the model. Explain, expand. We're definitely going to keep growing, trying to get more restaurants, get more chains, um, expand to other communities, uh, and get a larger user base. But mm -hmm. as changes on the app, we're trying to think of how we can make Gifted Meal possibly a one-stop shop where you can use it for open table, you can use it for... Um, if TripAdvisor, you can use it to like look up how good this restaurant is. You can look up if there's any coupons for this restaurant. Oh, this good is something idea. we've been thinking about for a little bit. Um, there's other other ways that we're trying to make it more social. Um, we're maybe thinking if you can have groups and um, try to compete who can donate the most meals at a restaurant. You can be king of the restaurant if you donate fun. a certain amount of meals. And there's there's all these different things we're toying around. Um, we're working with app developers to try to to try to just make this even more unique and revolutionary. Those are fun ideas. Mm -hmm. And then through the app, do you take the pictures? Or, yeah. Oh, that's very. So it's, it's all, all integrated with inside mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I love it. It'd be pretty neat if this was like the new Instagram for food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a social conscious um, add-on. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Well said. That was like, that's elevator. <laughs> that's awesome elevator. Well, Michael, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. I totally, totally appreciate your time on all of this. And for everybody out there, gift a meal. Yes. Where can you find it? You can find it on the App Store in the Google, Android, um, or the iTunes. just iTunes App right. Store. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. And you all have been listening to Mishmash. Go to iTunes. Subscribe. Be one of our people. We always have awesome people on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That of was course. awesome. Yeah, totally that was, this was a lot of fun. It. Thank you for having well, me. Well, and I will let you know when it's up and uh, and you guys can put it out there. Yeah, we definitely tag will. me and all that good stuff. Uh -huh. And and I'll put the live video on YouTube. Yeah, and, and it's, I'm I'm tagged on this. Um, I this put your name, YouTube? but you know we have to be Facebook friends. Okay. Then I can yeah. make sure. Um, let's be face yeah, Facebook. Yeah, let's be Facebook friends so that I can okay. tag you in it, and then we can do that from there. Sounds awesome. Great. Thank you, sir. Bye, Facebook people. <laughs> Finish.